What's up guys? We're here in Massachusetts hanging out at Travis's pad. Trent shot rope this morning. We're on lunch break slash afternoon break before we do some scouting. Just like every field trip, we have to take our trusty dusty hand press with us to keep up with orders because we got to pack all our orders on the road when we're traveling, keep them going out, outgoing packages there, tins, pots, hats, mouth calls and tape. U frames, extra scissors, meds bending frames. What up, this is what we do. Noon cutoff states are the best because we can actually get work done after noon time. Time to get work done before we go scouting around six o'clock tonight. That's our intern Mackenzie, everybody say hi Mackenzie. That's Vegas, she just kind of hangs out. But we got plenty of toys, plenty of frames, plenty of content, plenty of boxes, plenty of envelopes, plenty of pot calls, plenty of diaphragm calls, and unfortunately for my nap this afternoon, plenty of orders that we gotta fill. That's the lunchtime check-in, guys. I gotta get back to work. Well, here it is, folks. Second evening scout trying to find uh, my second bird for the morning so I can tag out be done and we can get back on the road and go back home get some intel there get some scouting done for opening day that's coming up in a few days and we need to get back to the call shop and start punching some more mouth calls for all the orders coming in for all the guys out there that are in the Northeast that have openers in the next week are going to be hankering for some of that product so we're going to be getting back home as fast as we can to get more of that product out but as of right now we're going to look for another bird we're going to try to get one more on film and then we're going to hit the road and go back on home and then we're going to hunt pink no band on legs oh folks we got a hen in the road going right down the center we'll let her do her thing oh she's going for it She's gonna make rope gobble. Oh, there's rope, folks. He's out there with about six hens, having a great day. He's out there, of course, right where a bunch of other guys wanna park and look at him, because he's right in plain sight, right within 100 yards of two roads on each side of him, and the only place to roost is a 50-yard wide little strip of woods down there, so he decides to live in a terrible area because of those hens like this set of red oaks down here and it's just bad for his health it's not a good place to live right here in this particular section of massachusetts so that bird is probably either going to get shot spooked crippled or fly from somebody i don't know if it'll be us but he's definitely going to get messed with tomorrow oh here we go We're gonna talk to the locals. I love it. This guy looks happy. Howdy. How's it going? How you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, you're videoing. Yeah, we're we're videoing turkey scouting. You checking right. out that bird for the morning? Oh yeah. Well, it's all posted here. You know? Mm-hmm. So. Did you hunt this morning? No. 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 I was in the hospital. So you got out and you're gonna get right after it, huh? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm Trent, by the way. Hi, nice, Paul. Nice to meet you, Paul. Yeah, we're gonna take a look around this here before a dark. Spot here anyhow. Well, good luck to you, turkey wise and health yeah, wise. I'm just riding around tonight because that's what I always do. Why not? A lot of pressure around here, especially first day. Yep, pressure and hand up. Yeah. All right. Good talking with you. Good All luck. Right. Take care. Good dude, but the usual pressured and hand up. Hmm. Always pressured and hand up. He went, uh, yeah, left and kind of into that corner right there. Paul, Paul's got some health problems, but he's still out scouting right after yeah, hospital. Yeah, doesn't work, but it can sure operate the brake, huh? Yep, can sure operate the scouting mechanism. Pressure? Lots of it. Lots of people hunting Massachusetts on uh, the opener here in the northeast starting to really see it we've seen it in the dark driving to where we hunted this morning and now we're really seeing it on the opening evening scouting mission there's a lot of people parked 
<clears throat> wherever you see a turkey that's within sight of the road, there's people stopped glassing it. Not bad though, got to shoot the shit with Paul and have my Cumberland evening coffee. Pretty thug though, he's driving around a Toyota hatchback matrix with no hubcaps. That's getting after it right there. Go ahead and get your cam and I'll pull you right up there. That's blonde. This is gonna freak him out. Well folks, we found blonde. And now you can see why. I'm glad we came back down here when we did because now you can see he's got blonde beard. He, this is unacceptable. You won't be crossing the road until I'm done filming you. All right, folks, he has a free pass. I will put the four ways on so he can pass safely. Let's go right over here and watch him climb the rock wall because it's interesting, folks. Here he goes, right here. Oh, he chose the break in the wall like a smart bird. Ooh, hen crossing behind the truck. Ooh, wing stretch and road. Same story as last night with them, folks. They hang out across the street all day long because we checked them at about 10.30 this morning. They gobble down across the street and then right before roost time they cross the street, go up 100 yards behind that house and they fly up in them pine trees. So that seems to be a possible no-brainer. And I know if that pair of long beards comes in and beats up the decoy, I only got one tag left because I shot a bird this morning. I am definitely shooting blind because I have history with him now two days in a row. And he's just cool. He likes me. I put four ways on to let him cross that. Well, folks, we just came up here. We scouted this area the other day before the season started when there was a monsoon going on. And we just stopped back here. There's four or five birds gobbling on the limb right over here on the other side of these solar panels. So we're gonna walk down this laneway and kind of go over that direction and see if we can see them in the tree before pitch black. And then we'll make a plan and then we'll skedaddle and get on out of here. But sometimes i do a little bit of different tactics than you see other people do they're gobbling they're in a tree they're not going anywhere i can walk right down the laneway practically within sight of them and look at them in the tree and know exactly where they are for in the morning when i want to slip in there in the dark so that's what we're going to go do let's slip right down this laneway right here and take a look at them in the tree There's that long beard that you can see really easy and then over to the right and down a little bit there's a bigger one. Then to the right of him there's a hen and then you go over in between them two pines there's another long beard. There's a hen to their right a little further away from them and then uh, I can't see the other one anymore but there was a gobbler in a tree in between the two pine trees. I'd have to look around on Onyx a little bit but obviously they flew up from that driveway right there some kind that driveway that goes around that retention pond so that would be the point where they're going to hit the ground is probably right near the v of that dike on that driveway
They say the bird, the bird that sounds the closest is that that long beard that's the highest up right there. He's high and left. He's way louder than the other ones because he's up higher and he's closer to us. There's got to be at least four or five goblin turkeys right there with a number of hens. But sometimes in a situation like this, it it helps you out a lot to not stick to do what everybody else does. And you hear the turkey gobbling in the tree in the evening and you're gonna look for a spot to hunt in the morning. You don't run right up there and spook him off the limb, but you can run up there and get within 150 yards of him on the limb and be able to put your pins on your map of exactly where he is in the tree. So you can go from there in the morning in the pitch, pitch black when you come back in here. But there's a lot of turkeys right there and they are very gobbly. I say the spring peepers are starting to make their noise for the night and that's usually when they start shutting down. So they're still gobbling occasionally, but nothing like, you know, 15 minutes ago when it was still light on the ground. So now we know where they are. We just gotta execute a plan and come in here in the pitch, pitch black in the morning and see if we can get all or one of them to come up in and beat the decoy up in our face. See him in the morning, folks. What's up, Ned? Well, we're almost to our spot that we scouted last night. The birds are on the roost there, right by that retention pond, and it's about quarter to four in the morning. We're gonna park and get our crap together, and we're gonna go up there and see what we can do on them. We're gonna put a full strut avian out there and a hen decoy, and try to coax them in with a couple calls and. Tyler's got his tags. I got one tag left, so best case scenario, we could whack three birds right there in one set. Trying to be awake is the hardest part. Playing games? Mm. Uh, we're going in. We got a little bit of a walk. It's really dark and really quiet though, so we're gonna have to go dark for a minute. We'll see you when we get there, folks. Well, we slipped in in the cover of darkness. We got the avian X strutter out. We got the head out. Everything seemed to go smooth. All the turkeys never made a sound, nothing moved. Everything's just dead quiet. The only thing saving any sound is spring peepers in the pond over here. But I think it went smooth, but we'll see here in about a half hour when everybody flies down and see how they act. I don't believe that they uh, knew that we were in here, so we should be good to go. Smash, rip, fall, thump. Probably 75 from the closest one on the limb.
So I come to Massachusetts, and of course these northeast states, you gotta buy your computer paper. So we've upgraded. Now we got a this little thermal printer, and it comes out as uh, you know like Iowa tags, stickies. So I printed off my sticky a couple days ago, and now I'm already done. So they got 122.95. I got two hunts out of it, and I had to provide the paper and the printer and the ink and whatever, you know, computer, electricity, charger, my fingers on the keyboard, my time, my credit card, all that crap. I had to do everything. They get all the money, but it ended up being worth it because tagged out. Massachusetts never disappoints, I is what I'm hearing. I mean, so far, yeah, it's been pretty great. Cartel Bangland, season five. Shit's really rolling, man. I don't know, the old 1187's had a hot barrel the last couple days. She's been in retirement for a while, but she's really ripping now. Done, man, done. What do we do now? Oh, we fill our tags out, and we go, and we jump in the truck, and we go find more, and we go shoot more. And then on to the next state, and on to the next state. It's just a never-ending thing till June 3rd at dark in Maine. You got to see the tactic last night. It's gonna walk down there and be like, I'm gonna go all the way to the point of seeing them gobble in the tree right there and I'm not gonna spook them and I'm gonna set up right there in the morning. I'm gonna walk right in and I'm gonna say, yup, we're setting right there in that 10 foot spot in the morning. Boom, boom, two shots, three birds, tagged out in mass. It's time to do other things. Oh yay, more footage to edit. I dropped my Remington out to the clip out. Mm. You guys like the boat shoes? Group putting them damn rubber boots on for this. That's what we saw last night, looking with our phone light in the dark. So we decided to park it right there. Pretty in the dirt road, isn't it? Ropes doing the sand pit. Ooh, hunt the turkey poop. Hunt where there's poo. I think I was kind of surprised when he flew up and he decided to land down at the bottom of that bank right on the edge of the water and completely disappear underground. And the first thing that came to my mind was, holy crap, ropes two in the pond dike. I wonder where he's gonna come out. I didn't know if he was gonna run back towards us and come right up by the blind or if he was gonna run down there and, and run up down on the corner by the dike. But he ended up coming out of this corner right here and I just waited for him to get his whole body up on the road put the bead like half inch, inch out in front of his beak while he was moving and let him have it. Apex made him go like that. Very pearlish. You like it same as yesterday? The old 1187 and original tree bark really likes them three inch nines from Apex. They really rip out there long ways. Pattern's really nice with stock choke in it. I think we're, we were hunting in the right area, but this particular spot right here I think is shot out. I think probably leave this spot alone till next spring. Three beauties right there. They look good and strut running in. Beautiful TV turkeys folks. Oh, yeah. Yep. Fred sent us the new HDR strutter. Snyder ran the, the white head on. Wow. <laughs> Other than that it looks great. It comes with this fold out Sand. It's a, yeah, it's covered in blood already and sand folds together all nice. You can use it as a fly swatter if you live in a single wide. Beautiful decoy, worked absolutely great. And normally we never hunt over the strutter. We always hunt over the HDR Jake. A couple calls, they looked right at it and rope did the frosted mini wheat slipping down the pond dike. We were testing the dominancy of the entire flock it's not we were messing with one boss gobbler and once they hit the ground and seen that new stranger there and they had a huge issue with that white faced strutter standing right there with a hand nice fan nice decoy fred good work you really outdid yourself on this one rope did the beach ball 
on the beach because it's a sandy situation here, folks. I like to pair it with a breeding hen. She's in the breeding posture, that low head looking like she's ready to lay down for rope. She's real buff colored and nice. She's also got some flocking on the back. She's doing that, I'm about ready to lay down. Drove them absolutely up a wall, down the pond dike, and right into the gun barrel. And we took a big bite and spoon fed ourselves, folks. And it all started with a Joker luxury diaphragm from about 400 yards that way on a whim and a wish. Proofs in the pudding, smash. Bing, ba bow, boo, bee. Man, and I had to run camera. I had to film myself, spoon feed myself. <laughs> oh. Weebles, wobbles, and they all fall down, folks. One shot, two kills. One shot, one kill. Bing, bang, boom, got the show. Let's go. <laughs> Massachusetts complete. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Cartel Custom Calls, and make sure to go over and follow us on TikTok. Check us out on YouTube for season five of Bangland, and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Check out our calls and give it a like. Close us out.